iPadOS 26 public beta is officially available right now, and if you want to give it a shot, you can visit the link in the description down below. But I wanted to give you my review of these betas so far. But as usual, please keep in mind these are still in beta, and so things like my thoughts and opinions on them, and of course the features and the look, could change. I also already reviewed iOS 26, so if you want to check it out, be sure to click the link in the upper right corner. But for this video, I want to try and focus on all of the major iPad-specific features, and not so much the ones that are being carried over from iOS 26. So let's jump right into the biggest change for the iPad, and that's multitasking, which comes with a brand new redesigned windowing system. And say what you want, but to me, it's more like Mac OS while still keeping that iPad look and feel. So whenever you upgrade to iPad OS 26, you'll be taken through a couple of screens, and one of them is to choose whether or not you want to continue using full screen apps like you do already, or if you want to go in this new multitasking system. If you want to switch between others at any time, just go into Control Center and tap on that Stage Manager icon. And if you tap and hold, you can actually access Stage Manager or the new multitasking system uh, because Stage Manager hasn't completely gone away, but the new preference is technically this new system here. So once you have an app in full screen, you'll see in the bottom right corner that you can just drag the edge of the window and begin resizing. And you can resize and place apps anywhere on the screen, which is awesome. It's no longer forced to certain positions or sizes, and so I really like this. These little changes to multitasking do finally make the iPad feel more pro and computer-like than ever before. When you want it, it's not something you have to do all the time. I think that's the best part about all of these macOS-inspired features. It's the fact that you're not forced to use this system if you don't want to. My kids, for example, this would be a nightmare for them. They just want full-screen apps, and that's not going anywhere. But for those of us who want four to six plus apps open at any time, you can do that as well. You also might have noticed that the traffic light circles have made their way over to iPadOS, which is another macOS feature. And so now you can close, minimize, or expand an app. But also if you press and hold on this, you do get some quick actions for window tiling. So you can now quickly jump into split screen, three vertical apps, or four square apps with just one tap. And these apps are all resizable at any point if you want to do that as well. This is really nice for getting windows a bit more organized and clean looking. You also get a menu bar in this mode too. Now the menu bar for me right now seems a little bit useless for some of these apps that I'm working in. And of course, not everything third party has been updated to utilize these menus, but some pro apps like Adobe's suite of creative apps will work really well with all of these extra menu bar options, kind of making it easier to find some of the more buried functions. To me right now in a lot of these apps, it's just a nice refresher to get the keyboard shortcuts down because you can go in the menu bar and look at the list of all of the different features that take a keyboard shortcut command. But I'm sure in the future with updates, a lot of this will be a little bit more useful. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, you probably noticed the new cursor by now on iPadOS. I think a traditional arrow cursor brings so much more accuracy and precision. So I really like this change. No shade to the circle cursor, but to me, I just prefer this style better. There is also a new expose window, which replaces the gesture for app switching. And so it gives you a better layout to see all of the open apps and windows. But there is kind of one thing that really bothers me here. And it might just be me personally. So for example, if I have two apps open in that split screen vertical orientation that I showed before, and I go and click on another app in the expose view, maybe it was a full screen app or one that I resize to be really tiny or whatever, it just brings that app in on top of the other two, which is pretty much how it works on the computer, but I'm kind of used to the whole stage manager thing where it would just then switch back to that two split screen apps that I have. It's kind of like managing different spaces. So I guess that's kind of where stage manager comes in and makes it a little bit more useful. I get a little annoyed when I go to switch between a full screen app and those two, and it just kind of brings the full screen app in over the other two. And yeah, I don't know, it just gets a little messy. But again, I think this is just a me preference. But of course, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. How do you feel about these changes with the expose view and kind of how you switch between apps? And do you like this better than the way it was before? The Files app also gets a nice boost here to make things a bit better to navigate on iPad. For starters, you can add custom folders with custom colors and emojis to make it easier to find what you might be looking for. And you can also get an updated list view, resizable columns, and collapsible folders. 
It's not Finder on Mac level quite yet, but it's pretty close. And you can even set default apps for specific file types, just like you would on the Mac. So if you have an audio file that you want to open up in a specific app, you can set that as the preference. Another useful change here is being able to take one of your folders and place them right on your dock. I like this, but there's one thing here that drives me crazy, and it's definitely nitpicking, but I don't like seeing the types of files in my dock. Like, I'd rather have the folder view of that folder rather than the files kind of stacked on top of each other. Now, you do get the folder view until you start adding in files to that folder, and then again, it just stacks on top. On Mac, you can switch it back to the folder view, but not on iPad. It's a minor thing, but I just want the clean look of the folders in the dock rather than just a bunch of random files stacked on top of each other. The preview app does come to the iPad and iPhone if you want it, but it's far more useful on the iPad, especially with the Apple Pencil. You can now easily edit and mark up PDFs and images, and I really enjoy that I no longer need to rely on a third-party app for this. Now, if you're transferring tons of files from one folder to another or exporting a video in Final Cut Pro, you no longer have to just kind of sit there and wait for these tasks to finish as background tasks can now be processed in the background so that you can continue to do other things. I just love seeing all of these features that make you feel like you have more of a hybrid computer than just a tablet. So those are some of the new changes to the iPad. But again, don't forget, you do get a lot of you know, feature parity across the entire suite of operating systems from Apple. So from iOS 26, you'll get the new games app, which will definitely be helpful for a lot of people out there who, like my children, can't seem to find all of the games that they've downloaded or just want to know where they were playing last and some of the things that their friends are doing, etc. It's a great application, especially on the iPad. You get live translation across messages, FaceTime, and oh yeah, there is a phone app on the Mac too, where not only are you going to get live translations, but you can manage phone calls and all of that from your iPad if you need to. And that app is also on Mac OS too. Of course, every new release this year is getting the brand new liquid glass design, which is prominent throughout all of iPad OS 26, like it is in iOS 26. So I would love to hear from you in the comments down below what you think of liquid design, especially on the iPad. So to wrap it all up, I've absolutely been loving the new beta for iPad so far, and it's finally giving what some of us have wanted, and that's the ability to have our iPads feel more like a Mac when we want it to. Which isn't all the time, by the way, but sometimes for very specific tasks, it's great to have this new level of multitasking and windowing options to get stuff done. But I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on iPadOS 26? If you've given it a shot in the developer preview, or if you're planning to download the public beta, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you around in the next video.